and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage! advantage. <laughs> well, Mike. Avanti! 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 Italiano! So, two completely ignorant young men. Young men, that's us, sir. <laughs> young! I'm going to try and tell you about this box. This is one of the four starter armies uh, for the new mid war Flames of War. This is about Italy in North Africa. Um, and looking at the pieces, this is kind of 1942. So, that would be around about right. Let's get these boxes open. Like a pro, I haven't taken the cellophane off yet. But, but. One of the great things about these uh, boxes is just how much stuff you get in them. The one you're getting in there, so you get 10 M1441 tanks or Semavente self propelled guns, so it's dual sprue. 447 mil, 488 mil, 400 mil guns. Lot of guns. Rule book, start here, booklet. One singular eight million bayonets dice, two decal sheets, and eight unit cards. But that's what's in the box. Yeah. But what's in the box? Oh, that's what you want to see when you want one of these boxes, mate. <laughs> Look at that. Right. Mountain of plastic. Fighting to get it out. Oh. <laughs> Topped off. With a little roll of bubble wrap for oh. your own pleasure. Oh, and so, uh, we'll sort these bits out and we'll be right back. We sort out the piles of stuff. So, we'll talk briefly about the, the, the few bits of bomb that come in here. And then we'll go through the sprues one at a time. There'll be links down in the timestamp. There's particular units you want to look to. You can just jump right ahead. All right. So, first of all, you know, in, in all the starter armies I've seen, you get one of these uh, little uh, fold-out booklets. They're really good because they're a combination of instructions and a little bit of information about what you've got there, telling you about how they use and copies of the stat cards. Very nice. Um, in addition to that, of course, you've got your unit cards, your decal sheet, uh, your bases, and your 8 million bayonet dice, and of course, your ubiquitous Flames of War rulebook in a little baggie to keep it safe. So, Mike, if you want to choose a sprue there, and we'll we'll talk about it uh, one at a time. Okay, so it comes with ten tank sprues. Yeah, and the the tank version is the Caro Amato M fourteen forty one. I suppose we call it a light tank, only fourteen tons, four man crew. 47 yeah, millimeter yeah, I'd, gun. Call, I'd call that a light tank. So the M1441, and in this box, it's what the tank the cards they're providing you with is an M1441 tank company. So the tank company comes with a tank company HQ, which is a single tank. There's no options there. Two points. That gives you an idea of how good this tank is. Um, and two to three tank or semavente platoons. So uh, it's got heat ammunition. And it's got self-defense AA, which is nice. So the M1441 tank. It's got a tactical move of, tw of 10, terrain dash of 12, cross country six, 16, and road dash of 18. So this isn't a fast tank um, with a 10 inch tactical move. And it crosses on a four, so it's not a high performance off-road tank. It's got a front armor of three and a side armor of two and a top, interestingly, of zero. That is going to cause you problems if you get bombed. <laughs> Zero. Oh. But you still get to roll a dice, right? Yes. But a lot of artillery has got um, strike values of one and two. Well, actually, they can knock these things out. <laughs> um, but you do get a lot of them for your money. Now, uh, the gun itself, the M1441, the 47mm gun, 24-inch range, halted two and moving one rate of fire. Anti-tank power of only six. And so over, but it's got a heat round, so you're never worse than that. You know, so you know, if the other guy's got an armor value of five, you can bail him. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an armor value of four. Lucky you could kill him. Um, so th this, this, hmm. but it's not all bad. As I say, the tank's coming with 10 means you can move it, and it's hit on a four. It's careful. Now, 
The interesting thing about the Italians and the way they're modelled in the rules, if you haven't seen this before, is this 8 million bayonets dice, uh, yeah, which, which we got. So essentially, if you don't have a load of these, it's just got the 8 million bayonets. So this is the Italian fascist symbol, the bushel with the axe in it. Is For every unit, you'll have two sets of stats. And you roll to see, because of the really mixed quality of the Italian army, at the start of the game, you lay out all your units and you roll a dice for each one and say, oh, that one's elite. <laughs> you didn't get to pick, so you went finding this, it's actually your 47 mil anti-tank guns end up being your only elite <laughs> unit or whatever. You have to roll, it's, it's quite random. Um, but they do have improved stats. So although, for example, this and the, the stats they've given the Italians are pretty good because... But it is important to remember you are seeing the better Italian units, yeah? So the, the armoured force in the Italians, although many, you know, second line Italian divisions of infantry performed really poorly, their armoured formations were part of Rommel's panzer army. They were the best of what they had in terms of the men and material going into it. So your motivation is confident, but you've got uh, follow me orders on a three. And you remount, determined and protected, it says, uh, you remount the leader on two. Um, and if you've rolled that, that second, that elite, that improves your follow me to a two. And your, your real problem on this one, though, is that your, your um, skill is only trained and your tactics is worse. So actually making those blitz moves and so forth, this is not the army to do that with. That's the leader. I'm just going to see if the main tank is the main the, the standard tank as well it's not just the leader the standard tank has got that remount of two with an armor of three you're probably not remounting very often you're probably blown up <laughs> but <laughs> if you have been bailed the sprue then mike yep so looks an interesting model the mm. the the upper hull's got a front piece and a rear piece with a single line joining the two and then, depending on whether you're going for the turreted... Ah, right, it slots into here. Yes. Right. So you can build the turreted 40 set, uh, 1445. Yeah. Or you can build the um, Semavente 75. Yeah. Now... And it's quite obvious which is which. One's got a hole for a gun in the front yeah. of it, and one's got a turret. Now, apparently, when these were first designed, the mm. idea of the Semavente was to be something like the Stug Free. Right. Except that they used them as self-propelled artillery rather than an right. anti-tank weapon. Yeah. So they were support rather than part of the front line. But when the, the M3s and the M4s came along, the apparently the 75mm uh, Effetto Pronto... Effetto Pronto. Uh, heat shells yeah. were very, very effective. So later on, these actually got more kills. Or compared to tanks. totally ineffective. <laughs> <laughs> Is that very effective? has some effect yeah. is a huge improvement yeah so um it's worth pointing out uh, taking a, a month this side then to, to to compare that to the semaventi because you can build either so although your m1441s are effectively two points each a little bit more in the bigger platoons but that's like the morale yeah. bonus from the way flames of war morale works bigger units lose less at, yeah. from morale because you only roll when you've only got one guy left don't yeah you? The Semaventes are nearly four points a model rather than rather than two points a model. But you can take a battery of up to six of them. That's a big unit. And it has front armor of four, which is a huge improvement on three. <laughs> it's got top armor of one, making it immune to being mortared and things yeah. like that. Um, it can fire, like you said, it can fire as artillery. It's got two and one rate of fire, but in 20 inches range. But anti-tank power of eight rather than six is a game changer in fighting medium tanks um yeah and it's a heat round so it doesn't have that long range problem yeah. it's got three up firepower as well so th th this thing being hit on a four yeah it's training is still four it's still got the tactics problem for the semavente is definitely a competitive vehicle uh compared to the m1441 yeah, just, just looking up, because I didn't know very much about Italian tanks until I did my research. And even before seeing the contents of the box, I'm thinking, how many of these can I take rather than the... <laughs> <laughs> rather than the junk that there's otherwise to take. So, 
yeah, they're definitely a lot better. It's got the same because it's it's the same. It's the same up to about three quarters of its total height. Essentially, do they mount a turret on top of that box, or do they mount a gun in yeah. the front of it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's interesting. I mean, at, at four points a model, I think that's a good tank. Yeah. Up, uh, armor four plus a dice still makes you largely invulnerable to crappy light tanks. It's got enough, just yeah. enough armor. Now the real problem um, with I Italian armor in the war is that all of these vehicles would have been good if they were introduced a year, a year and a half before they were actually introduced, is more the thing. The Semivente is not as good as a Stug, but if the Semivente had been introduced at a point where we're in earlier model you know, like um, Crusaders. Yeah. But the point is that they're fighting Grants and they're fighting Shermans by that point um, of, of Valentine's, where it just doesn't have the, the 1441, doesn't have the combat power, the penetration. And the Italian industry, it's a, it's a funny thing looking back. It's about welding. And I don't know a lot about welding other than what I've read in history books about World War II tank manufacture. But welding rolled steel plates together was a new process, and a lot of people just couldn't do it. And it, it's not as simple as being told, well, just weld it, mate, just, just do it. <laughs> I, don't, I can't tell you why, but the problem with the, a lot of the Italian vehicles, therefore, is they're riveted. And riveted, not only is it not as, not as good in terms of the quality of the, of the finish, the big problem is the weight. Yeah. Because to rivet something, you've got to rivet through, for one thing, <laughs> which is not easy if you're talking about armor plate, but you've got to rivet it to a frame. And that frame is going to weigh. And weight is everything in, in a tank. Yeah. Weight is everything. You can have big armor, you can have big guns, you can have lots of speed. All of these things cost more weight. How do you allocate your weight? To a big internal frame to rivet everything to. Yeah. Um, Top speed of 20 mile an hour on the road for both. Yeah, it's probably rattling loose yeah. by that point, though. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. But their but their uh, their combat performance alongside the Africa Corps is still pretty solid. Yeah, the Italians are contributing about half the tanks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're not, not insignificant and surprisingly effective in the game. I have to yeah. say, um, I was expecting these to be really naff. I mean, they're going to struggle with Grants and Lees. Certainly the 1441, but cheap though. Yeah, Italians against Americans, I would, I would probably use a mixed force. Yeah? Which, yeah, mainly Semaventes. Mainly Semaventes, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think but, as many Semaventes as I can build. And then on the modeling side of it, this bit mm. where the upper hull slots over, I'm wondering if you can probably build both upper hulls and then rest it over it they're looking at the sprue i don't I haven't looked at the instructions but all right the, the, so you bet you'd build the whole you'd build the whole thing and just plug it in depending yeah. on the game yeah i mean looking at looking at the instructions it really is it, it's like a tower build you just don't glue a certain point of it and I, I i have to say i tend not to do things like that just because i've got to keep all of these extra bits lying around and so forth but i but i certainly understand people would because these things they're not they're not cheap yeah these pros even in a kit like this there's 20 something items you still at full retail you're still paying four pound for one of these yeah and you're gonna it's, have lots. it's like with the shermans you know if you can build a 75 and a 76 turret i've still built the 76 turrets so you've got the option to swap so you can them swap them out and make your force more flexible and yeah. the same with this if you can do the 1441 and the semavente and just dropping those two dits in, mm. you've got more flexibility and... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so... Right, anyway, enough about the same event here, because we don't really know much anyway, do we? <laughs> we just kept talking for quite a long yeah. time. Um, but yeah, same event here, nice, and it's it's not a brand new kit, but it's newish. I didn't check the date on it. I think it's probably 2017, 2018. I can... It's 2017, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the fact that they've reached a kind of stage of their of their manufacturing of plastic sprues that they can consider doing Italian tanks and Italian guns in hard plastic is really positive for the future, I've got to say. So what do you want to look at next, sir? Sir, so I've got the 4732 Canon. The 4732, 4732. So this is a, a funny little one, on a, uh, two guns on two sprues. I mean, this may be the easiest plastic assembly you've ever seen in your life. 
There's literally five parts here, two of them being wheels. <laughs> There's a gun, a gun carriage, two wheels, and then some tiny little ammo boxes to put on the floor beside them. And then, and then another one there. This is probably the same time, 2017. So I think this came out with their original mid-war release. This was what they did. So this is the Italian anti-tank gun yep. teams. They're gonna go long ways on your standard infantry bases. Yep. Um, so let's have a look at the stats. We've got, again, they hit on fours. They've got a three up save, which is great, but they've only got an anti-tank power of six <laughs> and a heat round. So it's the same gun that's in the tank. The crew have got slightly different stats and they're also two points each. This is two points and this is two points. Why would you take the anti-tank gun? Well, because the anti-tank gun isn't going to blow up when somebody fires an anti-tank gun at it. <laughs> <laughs> and you need a very different weapon system. You lack some mobility, but it's got the survivability of that three-up yeah. save. You ain't three-up ain't going to save you with this. <laughs> Tell you that much. What do you rank to that screw there, Mike? Yeah. Uh, back to the, to the save, though. No gun shield. No gun shield. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's... That's really interesting. There's no gun shield at all on that. Yeah. Well, don't get shot at then, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so the, the Italian army is a really interesting one. I don't know, um, talking in terms of history, not just, not just this set. Because um, as part of Mussolini's control over Italy, there's a much longer period at it than Hitler does, and he's getting much more of his way. The Italians have rearmed early. If World War II had broken out in 1936, the Italians probably had the best army in the world in terms of its size and the modernity yeah. of its equipment. But they'd spent so much money on rearming to such an extent that they, that that level of investment can't be sustained. So they just peaked too early yeah. uh, for for the war. Um, so a lot of their equipment and a lot of their things. So Italian formations are much smaller than everybody else's. So as most people have triangular divisions, they'll have three brigades in a division and probably three battalions within a brigade, but not universally. Your Italians have gone down to a binary system. Now, th th what that should mean in theory is your divisional commander has a lot less to do. And that's actually quite important for command and control. The, mo the more attachments, yeah. war gamers never accept this, of course. <laughs> of course, I want all of these ancillary and auxiliary units. The more subunits one commander has to directly control, the more difficult the job is. And if you see most people's armies, they've moved to three is the magic number. Yeah. But the Italians went down to a binary system, which in theory should be good. But I think what often happens is there's, there's a misunderstanding about, yeah, but our divisions are smaller than their divisions. So if we're not going two to one, we're going to lose. <laughs> so I may be tactically a bit more able to control what's going on. But actually, maybe the core commanders, um, etc. So the, the binary divisions didn't seem to work out. And probably, and it's come to my mind because you mentioned about this not having a gun shield. I think they they have a lot of equipment that is untested. Whereas Germany um, and the Western powers, Germany rearms from his experiences in the American Civil War. Spanish Civil War. Spanish Civil War. The American <laughs> Civil War is a good one years before in the Spanish Civil War. And um, so things like this, this I could say, you know, you could see a group of commanders. Uh, sitting around a table saying, an anti-tank gun line is going to be nowhere near an infantry to fight. Mm. You don't need a gun shield. It doesn't need a blast shield. It's quite a small charge. Yeah. It's not It's not a big deal. And you go to war and you're like, no, no, no. We definitely want a gun <laughs> shield on this. Uh, uh, they didn't get the benefit of having that experience before. Yeah. They're already in the one before. They've already manufactured vast amounts of this equipment. The Germany is ma manufacturing new equipment on a small scale. Tests it in the Spanish Civil War. And say, yeah, we don't make mistakes like that. <laughs> <laughs> And the Western powers just haven't sufficiently invested in their armed forces until the war breaks out. And so they, ha they have a rearmament. And again, yeah. they're building the right kind of equipment. So it Italy really suffers from that problem in that it's got, it's got a an army that was great in 1935 that it's fighting in 1943. And it has to fight brand new American stuff, which has been able to be built with all of the experience and none of the preconceptions. Yeah. 
Right. Uh, that's that's that one. What do you want next? Forty-seven. So. And we're going to the the 88. We're going to the 88. Okay, so this is not an Italian model. Uh, this is the German Flak 36 88. It's it, it, it's not only, I'm not saying it's identical, it's exactly the same sprue. If you've got a German 88, <laughs> you've got one of these. All right, they do provide the crew figures. We'll, we'll look at those um, in due time. Like um, an increase, like, like many of the Battlefront uh, models that they make, where there's the opportunity to they've given you a few scenic pieces so there's a couple of spent shell cases yep uh, over here and there's a couple of a couple of unused shells and then there's some uh, ammo cases yeah which you can just decorate your base and given that you have that big sort of 40 by 60 is it or even bigger than that you've got a fairly big base now there's a big footprint on the 88 but just sticking a spent shell on an infantry base yeah, you know it, it, things like that. It just it just provides you with little things to decorate your basing with to give it that used battlefield look. So the eighty eight in the desert, Mike, an awesome weapon. Yep, an awesome weapon. Um, so these are these are you know not lend lease, but these are from the Germans. Range is forty inches. <laughs> Which which is probably still really low for what you know what it actually is. It's got the same rate of fire in most weapons, two and one. Anti tank power of fourteen. Crusader's got a front armor of three or four, I think. <laughs> um, a firepower check of three. So you got a four up save though. The bigger gun teams tend to have a weaker save. I was watching a documentary where they were uh, interviewing a lot of. A lot of Chelsea pensioner type dudes, you know, veterans talking about the thing in the desert about the 88s was everybody throughout the war recognizes the sound, but because of the nature of the ground in the desert, if it missed, it would skid along the ground afterwards. And this is a, you know, incredibly high velocity weapon. And it was, it was terrifying to be missed by one because of the <laughs> as it's gouging the earth and yeah. skimming along. You think, it's going to hit something behind us now. Um, and it's so such a powerful anti-tank weapon because it's designed to shoot aeroplanes down at yeah. 20,000 feet, right? That requires quite a high velocity round. Yeah. What do you reckon to the kit? Have you built some of these? I've got a couple of these in my German army, yeah. It's straightforward, nothing too complicated. Mm. Um, straightforward gun shield, slight, the gun sight mounting and that is just a, a little bit weird when you're trying to work out where it goes. Where it goes. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember that. I mean, yeah. the, the destructions are here, yeah. right? They do, they do tell you. I'm just going to check. Are they, are they clear enough? Yeah. yeah. So the, the the gun itself and the breech mounts between these yeah. two parts. So you build the gun assembly, then you plug it in, and then you put the gun shield on. This one, do, yeah, and then you put yeah. the gun shield on later. But actually, the desert ones often don't have gun shields. And and in their diagram, they're, tell, they're telling you yeah. not to. I was thinking about the pictures because that's they deployed as flak. Yeah, they deployed quite early in the war. Um, it's not that they don't they don't all have gun shields, but this it, this weapon was designed. You note know that the flak eighty eight doesn't have dedicated AA. No, it has self defense AA. Now this is a definitely a dedicated anti aircraft weapon, but it's not dedicated for. It's not designed to engage strafing fighters <laughs> coming for it. It's designed for very high altitude fire. Yeah. So you're allowed to fire it if you've been directly attacked, but it's, it's not got the dedicated AA roll. Um, but it's really in the desert where it comes into its own, where you've got those vast open yeah. spaces uh, where that really long range hits can be achieved. So the rules are going to be that we you build them without the gun shield, so they've got their normal infantry type save. But yeah, these we... these Italian ones, they don't have the gun shield rule. Yeah. They have the large gun rule and the self-defense AA. Yeah, so literally, yeah. no gun shield. <laughs> uh, not just on the model. You can put a gun shield on the model if you like, but you ain't getting the rule for it, <laughs> and you haven't paid the points for it. But that does keep them cheaper. And how important is a gun shield for an AT8? It gives, so it gives you bulletproof cover, it means the firepower check is required from attacks from the front. But in almost every scenario, guns start dug in. Yeah. And have bulletproof cover. Or, it's only if you move them. And this thing has a movement, tactical move of 
dash. <laughs> you can't tactically move yeah. it. You can terrain dash it or cross country dash four inches. Um, yeah, and because it's a large gun, you can't put it into ambush yeah. either. It's saying that uh, within 16 inches of the enemy. Yeah, so you can ambush with it, but not anywhere near the guys that you want to ambush. <laughs> The 100 centimeter, that'd be an enormous gun, 100 millimeter. 100 millimeter. Yep, or, or presumably 10 centimeter. Okay. So th this is the last weapon system in here. Um, sorry if there's been noise, it's been lashing it down <laughs> outside and we just kind of noticed uh, as we made that cut how loud it had become. Eunice. Hopefully it wasn't too distracted. <laughs> uh, that's Eunice out there, yeah, yeah. that's probably right. Um, so this is the 100 millimeter howitzer battery. So this is the final piece of the jigsaw. You've got all of the different types of Italian guns. We've had the anti-tank gun, we've had the, the powerful flak, 88 millimeter. This is their standard field gun. Yep. So this is really about bombardment. Um, so these come in batteries of two or four for six or 12 points. And they have all of the things that you want artillery to have. They have a 72 inch bombardment range with an anti-tank rating of three. That's that's actually pretty good mm. for top for top armor. You've got a chance of taking things out. Fire power three up, um, and it can do a smoke bombardment or indirect fire, but only sixteen inches of range, only one shot. But anti tank power nine, fire power two up, brutal, forward firing, slow firing, smoke. So these are actually pretty good at knocking out infantry in dug in positions. Yeah. I think that seems decent. What? But what's the sprue like, sir? It's f five main pieces: chassis, two wheels, the gun, and a gun shield. Yeah, and um, it does show the gun shield in the pictures. So yeah, there is there is, there is a gun shield in this one. Uh, does it have the gun shield? It has the gun shield rule. <laughs> so we're making it up. So there we go. An Italian gun with a gun shield, right? Yep. Yeah. And you got the two ammo boxes. You got two, one yeah. empty. Uh, sorry, one closed and one open, uh, which is nice. And again, the, these little boxes are nice to mix up on. You, you just cut one of these off and paint it brown and stick it on one of your tanks yeah. or something. There's a little wooden box. Do you remember the Tiger kit? It's got a bucket on it. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's, I know there's not a Tiger here. He's getting distracted. But it's just those little bits of Battlefield he tries. There's a bucket on a Tiger sprue. <laughs> Do all Tigers get issued with the bucket? Probably not. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> But, it, but, it's, but it's nice to know yeah. that among your collection of tanks somewhere, you get those things. But yeah, it looks like a simple, straightforward kit. Not too fiddly. You're going to put this together in 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the wheels, nice nice detail. And again, you've got, you've got the like a lot of these things, you've got the rivets on there, which are, you know, for those of us that wash yeah. and dry brush our models is the only highlighting we're going to do. We like that. We like yeah. that a lot. All right. Yeah. So then we got our men. 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 There's lots of men in here. There's no infantry in here. So, right. No infantry in here. Now, no. this is a starter army. It's not an introduction to the game. No. This isn't cheap. This is, I think, £80 re retail, maybe a, maybe $100 US. This isn't cheap. It's decent value compared to buying platoon boxes. Is this a complete army? I think you would be mad to play Flames of War without at least one infantry platoon. Yep. So, to, because it's such a cheap way of holding an objective, right? Yes. So, I, I do support that criticism here. However, however, guns are not bad as a backup versus infantry because they have the same benefits, especially like those anti-tank guns. They're so rubbish as <laughs> anti-tank guns. You could just leave them there as things to hold an objective yeah. with and dig them in and, and so forth. Yeah, well, in, in the starter guide, it gives it, this is a 75 point. Uh, this is a 75 point army. Yeah. yeah so quickly. Now the, the, the thing with this is again, I think with these boxes, they're, sh they're showcasing the very best of what they do. They're Italian infantry. They're infantry infantry, not their gun crews, which we'll come to. Last I saw was all still in metal. Metal is a very different proposition in terms of preparing for play. There's, you know, there's flash to deal with. Yeah. There's bases to file down to fit in the little divots on these bases. I built the Team Yankee British Infantry, which were all metal, and and there's work involved. Then they are nice models. They're nice sculpts for the scale, 
but there's a lot more work in than, than, than just getting a blade on a hard plastic through yeah. and, and, and just scraping across the mold line. So we've got our three different types of artillery crew to look at then. I was going to go with the tank crew first. Oh, you're going to go with the got... tank crew first. Okay. So, so we th so they're not just not you're not just being given American or something. No. You got the Italian tank crew and their desert tank crew. Yeah. Because they've got they've got a they've got a hanky over the back of their head. Yeah. They have a very strange hat. The Italians. I assume it's some kind of cushioned, maybe like leather or something like that. The tank crew uniform is 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 different. Um, you can see it on the on the cover art to the booklet. Um, so he's got some kind of, I think it'd be a leather hat, but then he's got this yeah. um, neck, neck protector. Some protector, and then it looks like a, a padding roll for, on some of them around the, the, the forehead and... Around the chest, yeah. yeah. So if, if you get bashed around in, in the tank. So in terms of the sculpts, there are... There's, what, a, guy, there's a guy on the end going... <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering, are, are all six unique, or is it just four... No, no, there are six sculpts here. Yeah. There are six distinct sculpts, which is which is nice and surprising. Um, these are made of the thermoplastic. Now, if you've interacted with this stuff before, it's got its detractors. My experience of having unboxed a lot of this product is I think more than anything, it's a quality control issue. Is that there are there there were early on some quite bad examples of this. Yeah. You know, if I'm be if I'm to be brutally honest, and I, I do like Flames of War on their products, but I received some quite poorly cast crew. But actually, these I think the I think the detail on yeah. them is really good. The cast is really clean. There's very little clean up to do. Um, it 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 isn't like hard plastic, and it's unfamiliar. But I think people just dismiss this stuff from its unfamiliarity and, it, and their early experiences of it. But when I've seen nice ones, and these these guys are nice, these tank crew, yeah. I think, you know, down to the pockets, folds in the sleeves and so forth. One of them's holding a map, a couple of them have got binoculars. Yeah, yeah. So, these are much yeah. more interesting tank commanders than I've seen on the, even on the yeah. hard plastic sprues. Have you, got a, have you got a product number? Yeah, BM116. BM116. Okay, so these look to me like the howitzer crew. Yeah. That if I was if I was a betting man, I'd say this was the howitzer crew. So these, oh, or are they? They might because the, these look like Bezler the Jerry. They've got they've got stuff in their helmets. They've got plumes, yes. Yeah. So these look like Bezler. So Jerry. these are the forty-seven mil crew. So these are for the forty-seven mil anti tank gun, you think? Yeah. Yeah, that that might be true. So these are in there. <laughs> so they've gone from they've had metal, they've had hard plastic, they've had this new thermoplastic, they've had they've had soft plastic, which is the bendy plastic, and, and and this this isn't the same either. They had so yeah. many different materials <laughs> that they've made, they made their things out. Of. So what you can see from these, it, it is it is a, a tough hard plastic, but it's obviously it's not like a injection molded plastic like on a sprue. And these models, these sculpts are definitely bigger. Like yeah. like like the, the men, the 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 scale of them is somewhat larger than some of these other other crew models. But again, the detail is is fairly nice and interesting. What I saw on mine, don't know if you had it. I often find you know going back to that quality control, you do sometimes get flames of war. You feel some of this stuff has been stuffed into boxes. Yeah, or pressed, and you often get like the models are fine, but the sprues all twisted, and that's a packing issue. Yeah, it, it didn't yeah. come out of the machine like that. Um, and it's usually because with these, they're just shoving so much yeah. stuff in, um, and probably bits like this going later. Um, but yeah, what do, what do, what do you what do you reckon? Um, not bad general style, you know. Um, the usual four poses: the the gunner, the shell holder guy with binoculars and the guy pointing mm. where he points we, ne we, we never know so but, yeah yeah straightforward gun crew straightforward gun crew there um so then the next gun crew is the triple one is the triple one so this is in the new thermal pla thermal plastic i mm. think this looks to me like it's for the howitzer yeah yeah S strangely enough on all four of my howitzer crews the middleman fell off 
Exactly the same over yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, it's done no damage to the model. And he's got he's got the firing cord. Yeah. Whatever they call yeah. that. An extremely thick firing cord. Yeah, uh, well, that's a limit of, of moulding, isn't it? But once yeah. he's sort of tucked in behind a gun. So there's, you get four of these sprues. There's five I'm guys on the... Focus. Oh. Sorry, trying to focus. So. Right, okay. But yeah, five-man crew. Five-man crew for each gun. You've got two guys with shells. One guy looking really... The guy on the on the, on the... On the left there, as I'm yeah. looking at it, really manly. Yeah. He's like standing there. Like, Sergeant yeah, Wilson. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's probably in charge. And then another guy who's rubbing his thighs. Yeah, in a slight squat. <laughs> yeah, in a slight <laughs> squat. Interesting. Uh, hopefully he's sighting the gun, but he yeah. might be just perving on the other guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, this is this is the that thermoplastic. And if you just compare that, that to this, the scale, it's much more of a true scale. Yeah, I mean, it, it may be the Bezzagieri, um Bezzalieri, my Italian friend at work yeah. tells me, they've also got quite baggy trousers, so maybe they just look bigger. Yeah. But, you know, compare these two and say, which of these is a, is a, is a nicer sculpt? And I'm like, it's, it's these. It's, yeah. the, it's the newer, it's the newer Sciocast stuff. The, I think the, when they get it right, it works. Yeah, but there's a pale grey to it. I, I, I feel like I'm touching it, it's going to be chalky. Yeah, I, I, and it's, 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 un, it's unfamiliar. Yeah. And, it, and, it's not, and it just doesn't feel right. And I think it's going to take us a lot of years to yeah. get used to it. But I think it, when it's worked well, it does produce a nice, clean yeah. cast. It's a very, very heavy sprue gate on it, though. There's going to be... Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To chop that off. But, yeah, nice. And then 114... And then one more for the last one. So this is the uh, uh, 88 in Italian service. Yeah. So again, these are just uh, standard ar army crew pieces. But you've got you've got the um, you've got the like my eyes the are not far finder, enough apart. Yeah. yeah, you've got that range finder the, and the long 88 shell. Yeah, the ear yeah. protectors guy. Yeah, so the ear protector guy. In our, in, in many many weapons teams, you're going to get at least one guy who's like this. But the other guys yeah. are not also doing that. Yeah. If the gun's firing, they're, they're all, all doing, doing this. That. Yeah. And if the gun isn't firing, <laughs> none of them are doing that. And it, it's always supposed, and it looks right in a diorama, yeah. but when you think about it, it's like, what, there's only one guy that needs to protect his ears. Yeah. And if, you, if you've ever seen the actual videos of them firing, they're all turning away because mm. they're not looking at the flash either. Because mm. then, they, you know, well, especially at night, I'd assume, you're going to just turn around, cover your ears and close your well, eyes. Well, it's an unnecessary risk, yeah. isn't it? Is, is, is yeah. the thing. So those are those. Um, beyond that, there was some decal sheets. Decals. Which again, I love me a decal sheet, especially when you're talking about vehicles. It puts some color on vehicles that are otherwise not there. Uh, the decals we've got here for, are for, um, yeah, yeah. So they're the company markings for first and second armored company. So they'll be within each of the divisions. Yeah. And then you've got the the three divisions. There's such tiny words. Centauro the division. The other one is Ariette. Ariette. And then um, Lancieri. Lancieri di Nueva. Yeah. Those are the three principal Italian mobile formations. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff in here. What is it? Uh, ten. Was it ten tanks and twelve ten guns? Ten tanks and twelve guns, yeah. Ten tanks and twelve guns with crew. So about about four pound uh, a, a unit, you get one of your eight million bayonets dice. So you get the unit cards. It's an interesting force. I think that this force against the British force, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Because of the low points cost of of those vehicles, I think you can with your L six is or your L fourteen. Sorry, N. M for medium, your medium 1441s, yeah. the, the tanks, which are pretty underpowered. You can still fight all the Crusaders and the Stuarts and, and the junk, but maybe you keep them on for later in the game when you need something to just run across the table, claim objectives, or you just put them out there at two points of and every shot that goes at them didn't go at something important. <laughs> yeah. And it frees you up points to get your big yeah. guns. You know, 75 points, you've got a lot of meat there, and you could still get yourself... A, pa a company of German tanks. You yeah. might be able to get a, a, an Allied Tiger for that. Yeah, and with with the howitzers as well, you're going to be using long, long range, and mm -hmm. then they've got that last ditch chance. Uh, if the, if the enemy comes in range, you can you can pop them with the direct fire. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm 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 very tempted by this one. I have to say, yeah. I'm, I am tempted to get this one uh, painted up and have a play of it. 
Because I'm looking at these like, which are, yeah. which are we going to do next? You know, which <laughs> on the channel we're going to do some desert games in relation to this. Which one do we do first? Italian one is interesting. All right, guys. I uh, hope that was useful to you. I think it's I think it's a decent set. If you want to yeah. start an Italian army, you want all the yeah. things in here, right, and much more besides. Thank you for watching. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. bye. Hello. If you're enjoying our Flames of War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you.